Hey Mac users, I got some really cool tricks for you. I'm gonna help you set up so that you can see a ray trace preview pretty quickly, even on your old M2 chip. I know, I'm sorry, I gotta call it old. Also, that hardware just isn't as powerful as the equivalent hardware in PCs. So you're getting about you know, 1 20th or 1 30th of the performance of some of the top tier cars in PCs. But guess what? We can still utilize the technology to get some previews while you're designing live so that you can get an idea of the lighting quality of your scene and maybe that helps you design a little bit better. I personally love designing in a ray trace view because it helps me just see the material reality, the way that the lighting bounces around the room, it really does improve my designs overall if I'm working in a ray trace view. So let's set up your Mac so that it's utilizing some of these techniques, okay? So first thing I want you to do is I want you to create a tiled window system. The way ray tracing works is it actually matters what the resolution of your monitor is because the more pixels we have, actually that's the more performance degrading things that we have to sample out for, okay? So um, it adds a lot of calculations. So the higher uh, the pixel density, the greater the calculations, okay? The other part about this is the higher the sample rate, the greater the calculations before we get to a denoised view. And on a Mac, that's gonna be really, really slow. But we can still set this up so that it works very, very well, okay? So go ahead and tile your views. I want you to do a standard rendering technique as a full camera that you're gonna be designing in. And then a plan view window, and then tile below that a ray trace camera. Okay, once you have that set up, let's get into the ray trace settings. So I wanna click this as my active camera, this little ray trace camera down here, right? So that's now my active window, and I'm gonna get into rendering technique options. Now you can double click your rendering icon, and that will get you to technique options as well. And here we go, we've got my rendering technique options for the physically based ray trace view. Now. Make sure use ray tracing is selected and opaque bounces and transmissive specular bounces actually don't matter in this view. What we're going to do instead is check approximate additional bounces. And this basically sends this back to the ray trace engine technique that was in X15. Do keep in mind that over time they may actually take away this checkbox and move towards just ray tracing only where we don't have this option. So in lieu of this option, you would set your opaque bounces to one and one because that's really going to lower the overall um, performance needs from your system, okay? The next thing I wanna do is I wanna set the sample rate to something really, really low. Keep in mind, in general, this is going to make for somewhat of a muddy looking view. And at times you're going to have issues with the automatic exposure setting, which is why the next thing I say is, go ahead and uncheck automatic exposure because automatic exposure is similar to metering in that we're taking the frame of the camera, it's actually not calculating anything else. This is its, um, this is its own shader that's built onto the graphics card, okay? And so what it's doing is it's just taking the frame of where the camera is fixed and qualifying you know, all the light sources based on the pixel that we're sampling and then adjusting all of the pixels according to how much light is in the scene and, and backscaling from there. It's kind of hard to explain without me having written anything for the software. I'm only speculating from the knowledge that I've picked up from talking to the developers, et cetera. So, Thanks again for uh, talking to me, Ryan, over here at uh, Chief Summit 2020, uh, excuse me, Chief's Training Event 2024 in Idaho. So I've got this set to manual exposure. You're gonna wanna adjust this, and you're gonna see, as I adjust this, you're gonna see this in the right-hand window, okay? So this is adjusting on the fly. Get this to something that seems to be like that median ground. And then, again, we've got our maximum sample right here. Your daytime backdrop intensity, you're gonna have to change this depending on uh, what backdrop that you're using, all right? And then adjust your manual, manual exposure from there. And then I really love to check use only backdrop for lighting because the quality that I get from that is really, really nice. This is only available in X16. So let me press okay. The next thing I wanna do is edit the active view. And that's this little pencil icon right here. 
And so I'm gonna edit the active view and in the camera panel down in the AMD Fidelity FX section, we wanna set our super resolution to performance and maybe kick up sharpening a bit. And so what this is going to do is it's a special um, shader built by AMD that's added onto our graphics card again. And it's, um, it's kind of splitting and guessing at what uh, neighboring pixels are. So let's just say that maybe it's, and again, this is me guessing at what exactly this shader map does, but um, my best guess is that it's taking something like quad pixels, splitting it into one, and then simulating and guessing what neighboring pixels are. I might be wrong on that. I love it if a developer chimed in and told me the correct um, thing that's happening in that shader map. So let me press OK now. And so, yes, the scene is muddy, but guess what? It is the fastest preview we could possibly produce for this, right? The more we limit the pixel resolution, the faster this will be. And so what happens? We get the design in this view. So I could do something like copy paste some, some stools here and see that update live in our view over here. And then of course, as I'm designing, I'm gonna be rolling around in this view, kind of editing things on the fly. Maybe I want these apples to be somewhere else. Maybe I want to duplicate these apples and place them over here. And you can just, just see that it's just updating in that 3D view. And we can always click into that 3D view, adjust the light sets, the lights that we want turned on, adjust our camera view very easily. And it's going to pick this up as fast as possible on that Mac. So if you really want to see just the lighting quality of your shot, this is a great way of doing that. Give me some feedback on this. I don't own a Mac, so you have to try this on your end and let me know what you thought when you set this up. See if it really helps you out as you're designing.